Hello everyone, and today I have a little redstone learning series, and this is going to be the first episode. So, unlike most, I'm going to be focusing on theory and developing a strong foundation for redstoning, because these will last you much longer than knowing how redstone components behave, because they can change with every update. So, Today, I have three levels of redstone. So, first up, we have memorization. This is mainly users, uh, and this is when you memorize common circuits or parts, such as logic gates or uh, whatever. So, uh, you just memorize anything. You memorize what it does, but you don't understand how it works. So, it's very difficult to actually troubleshoot the design if it's not working because you won't really understand what's wrong. So level two would be understanding and this is pretty much where most redstoners are and they understand game mechanics, how redstone components behave, uh, they understand certain concepts like piston layouts and uh, block update detectors and they may even be able to come up with some of their own actually. They also have the ability to look at an existing design and reverse engineer it to figure out how it works. And they have the ability to get most contraptions working if they're given enough space. And troubleshoot any broken designs to make them work in an update or, uh, or just if they're not actually working when they built it, they can figure out how to make it work. And simplifying circuits, so they may notice that there are two pistons with two inputs and one of them always fires two ticks after the other. So when they notice that, they will then put a two tick repeater uh, going from the first piston to the second piston and that would simplify it down to just one input which makes it much easier to wire up. And they would also understand redstoning norms, how to count dimensions, etc. This is understanding. Most redstoners would be here, like I said. Uh, now, we want to know what makes a great redstoner, which brings us to level 3, which is flexibility. Now, I can't stress this enough. Flexibility is the most important thing you have to have if you want to become a great red center. And this is when you're trying to become as flexible as you can with your understanding. And so things like working under limitations, so torchless circuitry, this is when you have to think about how do I make this work without using this? And this is uh, actually a great way to practice certain things. Making parts fit the design rather than making the design fit the parts. If you take a look at most really good designs, um, you'll notice that they actually have a lot of uncommon uh, parts or just parts which, uh, they've, which the Red Center has just improvised. So um, instead of just making the design the sum of the parts plus wiring to link them all up, uh, they won't do that. Instead, they would do some wiring, and if they figure out that they need a certain part, like a monostable, rather than trying to fit a monostable design in, they would actually uh, look at what they have and try to figure out a way to create a new monostable which would fit it better than others. Um, they also, because of all of this, usually have highly compact wiring and they're able to modify designs to improve them speeding them up, speeding them up or synchronizing the piston animations um, or adding features all while retaining the original size so yeah guys I hope you learned something and remember if you want to become a great red sooner you should keep in mind what I said about flexibility because without it your designs are just gonna be meh so anyways, that was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.